more people waiting. Hello, everybody. Are you hearing me? Hi, Jim. Hello there. Hello, Jim. Uh, we're uh, letting everyone in here. It'll take us a moment or two. Glad to have you all. Give us a couple of minutes here to get things organized on our end. How are you, Jim? I'm doing good. How are you, Doreen? I am good. Michael and I are good. No complaints. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you on here. Good to have everyone on here. Over here. Okay. Yep. We'll give us a few more minutes. We'll be loading this up. Uh, some of the participants. So. It's uh, a little bit rainy out here. We're getting the outskirts of Hurricane Sally, but it's nothing to nothing much where we are. Uh, out west sounds like is pretty smoky, but doesn't sound good. It's getting a little bit better. Good. Still bad. You should see my truck. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it turned gray on me. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, I see you. It looks like you're under the big lights. And uh, for, for the most part, most of you can go ahead and unmute right now. We'll just chit chat if you want to for a couple of minutes, and then we'll get into our little presentation. But you're welcome to unmute. Gotcha. <laughs> David, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm going to keep muted because I've got a little one occupied by my phone here playing some uh, baby uh -huh. tunes, my little grandson. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. All right. Well, does, does, does he want a job? I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll start him early. <laughs> I hear you. Mr. Mark Johnson, which fire are you next to? Well, I'm in Hayward, which is uh, San Francisco. So the closest ones up would be up around Butte County, Northern California, Chico up around that way. Oh, and then yeah. they've had some out, they've had some out, uh, well, they're kind of under control now, but they've had some out like in the Modesto around there. All this stuff started with uh, lightning from about two, three weeks ago. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it was really, it was really ferocious. <laughs> I I hear that the I hear that the air is real bad up there in San Francisco. Yeah, it has been the past couple of two weeks, but it, it's actually started getting clearer yesterday. I mean you can actually see the Golden Gate Bridge <laughs> for, for a change. There you go. Hey, at least you can breathe a little easier. Yeah. It didn't help that the wet it got to be like 105, 110 around around here for some spots too. I don't know what the problem was. Got most everyone in. All right. Well, I think we're about ready to get going here. Well, welcome, welcome everybody to Titan Talks. Today is September 17th, 2020. And we're glad to have you. And we're glad uh, that anyone that looks at this after the fact, because uh, there's quite a following that reviews these and looks at them afterwards throughout the United States and some of the world. We're, we're glad to have you. Uh, and, and hope that you're enjoying it and we're going to keep doing it. Uh, today, we're going to introduce you some to our staff, our core staff, which we're uh, very fortunate to have. Uh, the average time here on the staff is probably eight or nine years. And, uh, you know, it, most of these people have been with me quite a long time. And uh, they're the ones making your trains and have been. And uh, it, it's, it's great to have a core group that knows what they're doing and that is very supportive of what we do. And we try to support them and make it a pretty decent environment. 
Uh, otherwise, I guess they would have left. <laughs> so we're, we're glad to have them. And they, they like doing the neat projects that they're doing. They're not trained people, but they are interested in doing a good job. And uh, it's based off of the designs that I come up with, uh, with, with a lot of integration of, of them and, and, and more, more in particular, one person will introduce. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and get it going here. Uh, with our little slideshow presentation. So give me a moment. And let's see here. Don't have to do it. Don't have to give me a moment. We got a little technical malfunction. All right. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to go here. Hello, Jim. All right. Hello. Hello, Ron. How you doing? All right. Here we go. We're going to hear some of our core staff, and you're welcome to ask me questions as we <laughs> uh, go along here. Those are the best uh, two looking staff you got. Chat. Well, I think they are. This is two of the most important ones. Uh, Coco was on the left and Nyla on the right. And they've been with me about seven years and they get to come to work every day. Uh, they're, they're our chief ambassadors. So hopefully one day you all can come here and see them or we'll travel to you and you'll see them because they, they go with me everywhere. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have them around. It helps. Let's see. I'm trying to get it so we can uh, change these. It's not quite working yet. All right. Well, also, actually, before we <laughs> Before we get to him, we're, we'll talk, talk a little bit more about, uh, uh, actually, we'll, we'll introduce me some. Uh, after my dogs, it's me, Jim Humphrey, and I've been, uh, started Titan Trains, and actually it began as Mountain Car Company 37 years ago. Uh, now, we could do a whole Zoom session and then some on me and my history with the company, uh, but for now, we'll just uh, briefly introduce me, that, that I'm the owner and president, and that, that I've developed everything, a lot, a lot of help from a lot of people. Uh, it, this has been much, much of a community effort in many respects. Uh, could not have done it all by myself. It did take a great core staff. It took a, a, a lot of very important friends, and along the way, we've developed Titan, into Titan Trains of what we are today, which is a little manufacturing plant with a pretty extensive product line and getting things out the door. So uh, then after me, there's a, we do have a part-time person, Gina, who does a lot of our accounting and bookkeeping. And uh, you're not gonna see her on here, but, but that's a behind the scenes person that's pretty important. And she's been around for uh, 10 years. All right, there we go. Now, one of the newest members to our team is Corey. Corey is actually out from, or uh, comes from Oregon, and uh, he has been very instrumental in why we're having this meeting right now, and a lot of our great marketing uh, that's going on. He's the reason, and we're fortunate to have him. Uh, we're, we're glad to have him, and uh, uh, we appreciate you, know, you all um, uh, you know, looking into what he does and his post and the website development and, and everything he does. He, he's making us look good. You know, so he, he's, he's in the office working away uh, several days a week. Next person we've had is Mike. Mike has been here for 26 years. Uh, Mike is uh, instrumental in 
and uh, running the CNC machines and programs here. Uh, he does the uh, programming in his office and then is one of the chief operators of the machines. He's also very instrumental in the product development, uh, uh, you know, and all the things that we do. Uh, you know, he has a tremendous amount of institutional knowledge of what goes on here. And is a core, one of the core reasons, integral reasons of why we do a lot of things good. So Mike, uh, you know, he does, you know, here he is running the machine. That's our CNC machine, one of them. And, you know, several functions or aspects of it. Again, 26 years, that's a long time. Then the next one is Scoot. His real name is Steve, but we call him Scoot. Scoot is responsible for making a lot of the parts that go to the um, uh, go go into all the products we make. We might have to mute someone. There's a background noise going on of uh, kind of a tapping or something. If someone knows what that is, we might have to mute them. There you go. Thank you. All right, Scoot. Uh, like I say, is instrumental on making a lot of the parts that you all get. Uh, the, the raw materials come in, and after they go through the CNC machine, or a bunch of them go through the CNC machine that, that Mike does that we just showed you. Scoot does uh, a lot of the uh, secondary operations on those parts and makes a lot of other parts on various machines. So uh, Steve is our parts man. We're all about making a lot of parts before it ever gets to uh, a place where we can assemble the cars. Lots of detail finishing work, lots of secondary operations. And you know, he's been here, uh, he's been here 21 years, uh, quite a while again. He, he's a very important part uh, of our operation. Does many, many things. And a lot of these uh, people are cross-trained on many jobs. So it, uh, you know, we, we can function, uh, even if one person's out for a little bit, we still function. It's not as good as if they were here, but we do try to have a little bit of redundancy. Now we've got John and John, you've probably met uh, kind of through some of our videos and so forth, but John is one of the main persons who makes all the parts for our freight trucks and couplers. He runs the CNC machine, making wheels and axles and brake beams and machining and, and grinding the uh, castings to make the freight trucks. He stays busy doing all of that on a daily basis. Uh, he, he keeps us trucked up and couplered up. Uh, he's, he's, John uh, has been with us uh, six years. Uh, actually, and he used to work for us a long time ago, so he's, he's been around us a lot more than six years. I've probably known John for 25 years. Uh, John's really great guy to work with here. Uh, we're fortunate to have him, and he, he does a good job. And there he is running the CNC machine, putting a wheel blank in. Assembling trucks. That's... I can look outside my office window and this is one of the typical activities I'll see him doing. Then we got Curtis. Uh, if you've got a locomotive from us, more than likely Curtis's hands have touched it in, in making a lot of, uh, or refining some of the parts, making some of the parts and then the final assembly of all the parts and modifications, getting the locomotive chassis built, uh, trucks built, uh, and then getting them final, final prep once everything's done, the final fit out. He's one of the ones instrumental in that, along with a couple of others that help. Uh, but Curtis, Curtis's hands have touched it. Uh, here he is working on a center sale of a locomotive on the beginning of another build. Now he's good to have around. Curtis has been with us at, you know, at least 12 years. Now we got James, and James, if you've got any of our train cars over the past uh, six years, James probably touched it. Uh, James's uh, main function is in assembly of the train cars. Uh, we're fortunate to have him. He knows what he's doing, and James uh, spends his days 
assembling train cars from all the parts that the other people have been making that filter down towards the uh, assembly area for the train cars. So James makes up the raw train cars uh, that eventually go to you all. So he stays busy in his area. And again, he's, he can do other functions. Uh, he's done crating, he's, he's done miscellaneous final fit out on train cars, but nowadays we're keeping them busy just assembling train cars. Now Vern, Vern is another uh, important one who's, if you've gotten a locomotive from us in the past couple of years, uh, and or some train cars, he's probably also touched it. Here he is uh, in the diesel body assembly area. Uh, he's one of the chief diesel body builders right now. Uh, and, you know, he, he does quite a bit. He can also paint, uh, work on the chassis, uh, and final fit out of locomotives and train cars, and just overall good general knowledge of health throughout the whole shop. Here he is. Uh, this is a, a picture of a GP42L, I think, that we uh, have done recently. And, and here he is, uh, you know, helping on one of the passenger cars that we've made, a special custom car. These are a couple of custom cars that are uh, going to be going out the door soon that have, are in the paint. Uh, these pictures are a little bit uh, dated, but uh, gives you an idea of some of the things they do. And then final finish out of uh, a locomotive body. That's a lot of what uh, Vern does. And Vern's been with us. He's been with us two years, even though he's one of the newer ones. Uh, it's like he's a veteran here and has been here 20 years. And Vern's doing a lot of our welding now. And then Timmy, we have Timmy who, if again, if you've gotten something in the past three years that's been painted, good chance that Timmy was the one that painted it. He does a lot of the prep work, paint work, graphic work. He also does a lot of the crating and shipping uh, and also final fit out of train cars. And when I say final fit out, uh, that means things like installing the trucks, couplers, brakes, uh, and on locomotives, there's all kinds of final fit out things, uh, adjusting and checking and a lot of fiddly details. And someone like Timmy is the one doing it all. And so he's putting on the graphics and Vern can also do some of these things, but Timmy is the main one doing it in the paint booth and then final shipping here's something getting ready to go out the door on the loading dock putting on the plaque cards and away it goes now i think that's uh all we've got on the staff uh let's see we're gonna uh, open it all back up here for any questions and i got a few other things to go over any questions on the staff or any thoughts any comments well, I'd like to say that uh, the two times that I've been down to your shop, Jim, uh, all your uh, employees were very generous and uh, forthright with answering questions, telling me this or that. I mean, just uh, just a great bunch of folks as, as far as I'm concerned. You're, you're fortunate to have them. Yes, I am. And thank you for recognizing it. They are, uh, it, it's just it makes life a lot easier on me and you all because it's what helped get you all your products uh, hopefully in good order and working order and uh, we're, we're proud of what we do and uh, you know again just fortunate to have a good staff. Uh, the plant works Monday through Thursday four 10 hour days and that's worked out pretty good as far as getting things done and also keeping them happy and all of us happy. So see if anyone else needs to be let in the meeting here. Uh, we're checking it out. Also, all of you can unmute now if you want to talk. You know, as long as there's no, not too much background noise, but you're welcome to unmute and talk. Um, any other questions or thoughts before I move on? Jim? Robert. Yeah. Uh, just a side note, this uh, past weekend I was up at the Adirondack and no less than two people wanted to buy the trucks I had on the caboose. Oh, really? You, you made them uh, quite a while ago. 
and I uh -huh. kept telling them, call you, call you. <laughs> but I understand uh, you don't plan on making them. Maybe a, a, a run of them would uh, be profitable. Well, which, which trucks are you talking about? Arch bar or what? No, the caboose trucks. Oh, the caboose trucks. Yeah, the express trucks. Yeah, okay. Uh, the Yeah, I mean, we discontinued those because we were just doing so few. And also, relatively speaking, they're very costly for us to make, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, even if we make more, unless we charge a lot more money. So, unfortunately, it just... It's, it hasn't been a good product fit for what we're doing now and getting things out the door in a timely manner, unfortunately. But, okay, well, uh, then I'll just have to raise the price and sell mine. That's right. You can make some money. <laughs> but on the other hand, you all telling me these things at least puts it on the radar that maybe it's an idea that can be revisited to come back to one day, okay? Yeah. So, so yeah. it's good to tell me anything. Uh, yeah, in fact, somebody on uh, Discover Live Steam, uh, when I had some pictures on there of some of my cars, uh, they were asking me where I got the trucks because they were looking for that specific type of truck, uh, not just the uh, regular yeah. freight trucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, okay. I said, I'd call you, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Ron's got a point there, Jim, because I think Tom B's the only one that offers the caboose truck right now that I know of. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, we're we're getting into the realm of a part that there's only a few made, and we tend to let those things go to the to the more crafty people out there, who who are good at making a a really good something. They they don't make a lot of them necessarily, but they do a great job at it and offer it to you. Uh, some yeah, of these. I just thought things, I'd pass it on. Oh, yeah. And so some of these things tend to hold us up from doing a good job on other things. And we've got to be careful about that because that's a hard lesson I've learned <laughs> over the years. All right. Well, I'm going to go on and talk a little bit about some of the um, things we go through in a year as far as materials. Just maybe some interesting facts to you all uh, on, on just, just uh, you know, the stuff we go through. For instance, in an average year, we go through about 25,000 pounds of aluminum. That's sheet, uh, bar stock shapes. Uh, you know, on a weekly basis, we're getting in aluminum shipments and constantly going through it. So about 25,000 pounds a year. Uh, steel, steel that we use for axles and wheels and diesel wheels and frame materials and all kinds of miscellaneous stuff. We go through at least 15,000 pounds a year on that. Um, and castings for the freight trucks, which is the modern, our modern truck and our Bettendorf truck, there's about 10,000 pounds a year of that that we go through. So, you know, to me, these are pretty snappy quantities for a little business. Uh, now, if you're talking about screws and nuts and bolts and fasteners and rivets, we go through at least 300,000 of these little pieces a year, and there's probably a hundred different varieties, more than a hundred different varieties of things to keep up with. And at any given day, if we run out of a three cent rivet, that can hold up a very expensive project. So there's a lot to keep up with uh, as far as all the fasteners, because you know, a five cent screw it's just as important as a gasoline motor as far as finishing, you know, a locomotive. Yeah. Uh, bearings, uh, you know, or springs. The springs on an average basis, we go through 7,000 springs a year. 3,000, over 3,000 bearings in a year, you know, supplying uh, bearings for all the car trucks, locomotive trucks and such. Paint. Paint is a really big... Um, uh, you know, costly item here. People don't realize how much paint costs, but on a given, uh, on the average, a quart of paint that we use, which is automotive base coat, clear coat paint, and then all the, is about a hundred dollars a quart or more. That's a wow. quart. Now, on Ooh. any given year, we go through roughly, um, let's see, 400 gallons, that's gallons of paint uh, solvents, activators, 
uh, and reducers, and, you know, miscellaneous things, all the things associated that go with the paint, we go through about 400 gallons. Now, for a little company making trains, that's a lot, uh, especially when, you know, it takes a quart, you know, to paint an average train car or a little bit more, you know, or, or twice that, three times that for a locomotive. But there's also a lot of associated things that go with it as far as uh, solvents and reducers and such. So, so the paint is just a fraction of what goes into painting our products. Uh, now shop supplies, all the tools, cutters, drill bits, saw blades, miscellaneous things that we buy to keep the shop going uh, from, from gloves and masks and belt, you know, sanding belts and everything. I mean, we easily go through $15,000 a year of just that stuff, you know, making trains. <clears throat> Electricity. Uh, we go through about 100,000 kilowatt hours a year, which would run about five or more homes on the average, it looks like, uh, you know, to produce our trains. And that's just the main plant running four days a week uh, and, and a little bit beyond that office and, and some overtime, uh, which leads to things like uh, we have a rotary screw air compressor that, that puts out constant, uh, constant 60 CFM with a 15 horsepower three phase motor. And that runs on the average 2,400 hours a year. That that thing is constantly humming and running away and the shop can't run without it. But 2,400 hours a year on an air compressor uh, wire, wire for the train cars. Um, uh, any, anyone else do we have in here? Wire for the train cars, we prob for all the locomotives and such, we probably go through 4,500 feet of wire. Uh, again, for a little company, I think that's pretty snappy. And then we keep track, just in general, of, of probably, you know, plus or minus a thousand parts, all the different parts to go into train cars, all the different variety of our train cars that we make from cabooses to flat cars, then locomotives, the different varieties of locomotives and all the chassis components and truck components. Um, probably at least, uh, if you're talking about graphic sets, we, we go through at least 120 graphic sets a year from Connie Miracle. She does a wonderful job for us. Uh, and keep in mind, not everything we do gets graphics. <laughs> so uh, that, that's pretty good. Over 300 air brake cylinders a year, to give you an idea. Uh, a whole lot of, we go through a bunch of uh, Briggs and Stratton V uh, twin 16 horsepower gas engines and hydrostatic pumps. Um, and then once it comes time to, to crate and wrap everything up, it looks like we go through about 40,000 feet of shrink wrap in a year. And so that's just a few numbers to give you an idea that, that you know, we're an ongoing operation uh, to give you some heads up of some of what we do to, to make the trains. There's a whole lot of behind the scenes stuff uh, that we're proud to share. Uh, some of it's proprietary, but that's just a few numbers uh, to give you an idea of what we do and go through. Any questions or any thoughts? Jim, I do got one question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, I had seen an article, can't recall where it was now, uh, something about that Briggs and Stratton was going to stop producing their engines or something other to that effect. Have you heard anything of that nature? No, not at all. They're, I, I've not heard that, but I also know that they're not going to stop producing their engines. Okay. There are certain products that they have. Now, Briggs & Stratton makes a lot of products that use right. their engines. Right. Now, they have trouble making certain products, like at, at one point throughout this COVID virus, and it might still be happening, pressure washers were, were difficult for them to get parts for. Uh, they, they had a difficult time in their supply chain for certain products, but it has not been a problem on the engine supply side. Uh, we have not had any hiccups in, in any of our suppliers. And I, and I want to commend that, that all of our suppliers that we deal with, and I do mean all of them, that we've chosen to deal with and to deal with us, 
have not had any hiccups in supplying us materials uh, throughout all of this. And that's really fortunate. But I also attribute it to, I think we picked some pretty good suppliers. And in some cases we do not pay the cheapest price, but we pay a price that makes them want to perform like trick ponies in getting us parts and, and in continuity in what we use. And I think that's a pretty important part of our business is, is a lot of continuity and consistency of the parts that we use. And uh, the engines, the gas engines, um, you know, my discussions with who I know from there, it's, it's, all, it's all going good. Um, there's not a problem with the engines uh, or the hydrostatic pumps. The engines, uh, you know, do have a lot of foreign parts in them. I'm not sure where they're made, but there has been a constant supply. Uh, the hydrostatic pumps are made here in the U.S. Well, they're assembled in the U.S. and with some parts from foreign, but there's a, you know, we have not had any hiccups, as well as all of the other components. So we're pretty good there. Thank That's you. good news. Mm -hmm. Anyone else got something, want to chat or anything to say about stuff that we do or, or our staff? You know, we hope it's kind of interesting to see a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff of what we do. Yes, yeah, uh, that's, that's, it's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, we're, we're getting close on time here. One of the things we're going to do is, is let you all in on uh, some upcoming projects, which we did just send out a constant contact email. Uh, but it looks like we're going to be uh, going ahead and, and developing uh, some F units and E units uh, as soon as we finish the SD70 project, which is we're fast tracking to get that done so we can get on to some other stuff. Uh, you know, the F unit and E unit project is something we started many, many years ago and then put it on hold. Uh, but now we're going to get back to it. Uh, it's going to, we're going to get on it hot and heavy and look forward to having that, uh, getting into that as soon as we introduce the SD70. So we'll be coming up here. Uh, just give me a little bit more time and you'll be seeing the SD70s. And uh, Jeff Party will be getting his. Uh, I mean, you know, not real soon, but it's getting there. It's getting close. And, um, you know, we're, we're proud that we're going to be able to do this. And uh, some of you may or may not be interested in them, but I, I love them. I think they're neat. Always have. Some other people do. And uh, so... We're glad to uh, be able to pull the trigger on that and have that follow our SD70 project, which, and we'll, we'll keep, once we will keep ro rolling on our development phase of the SD70 into these other two units after we get it done, uh, since we're, you know, getting on a roll here. Are you going to bow metal f for metal uh, shells or uh, fiberglass? Uh, it's going to be all similar to what our current structure is, which is a lot of aluminum in the body. Uh, the nose will be a composite nose, uh, but it'll be extremely substantial. Uh, and the sort of thing where if it gets damaged, no one survived the wreck anyway. So, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's what we're striving for. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a good addition to the to the lineup, those yeah. E's and F's. Yeah, it is. It's something I've always wanted to do. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of discussion about it. A lot of people talk about it. There are fewer buyers for that sort of thing, but, but I think we'll capture enough to make it worthwhile. And, uh, you know, they just look good. And now there's some other people out there doing some wonderful F units. And, and not necessarily trying to compete with them, but a little bit in our own way we will. Uh, we'll have our version and they have their version. Their versions tend to look very good and very detailed. Uh, and then ours are, you know, we're gonna functionally work really well and look pretty good. Uh, and then hopefully be priced appropriately. So uh, I think there's room for us to do this. Anything else? Say something, Doreen. <laughs> uh, hi, Miles. Since Mike's not talking to me, say something. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little late there, Jim. But uh, what were you just talking about? Uh, well, we're going to be uh, developing 
E units and F units. Uh, after we finish the SD70 project, we're going to keep rolling on two other locomotives, which okay. from our point of view are very similar as far as developmental uh, and part status. Wonderful. Look, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to the F units. Yeah, well, I mean, you'd really look good with a bunch of F units, Doreen. I mean, I mean, you know, that would be a great present from Mike, I think. Hey, yeah. she looks oh, good anyway. A nice Norfolk Southern business train, absolutely. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. I take it you're an NS fan? Well, which, a little oh, bit, yeah. Well, my son's an engineer for him. 30 mm -hmm. years worth. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Mark, where's he at, Ronald? He uh, works out of uh, New Jersey. He's in the Harrisburg division, but he runs uh, New Jersey to uh, Harrisburg and back again. Awesome. I just retired for 20 some years Fantastic. out of Portsmouth, Ohio as an engineer. Yeah, well, unfortunately, even with the number of years he's got, he can't retire because he's only 55. Mm -hmm. Huh? So they 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 can't they can't even give him this pension and stuff until what is it sixty, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Biggest problem well, is he won't let me go with him. <laughs> <laughs> well. He um Ronald. Yes. He hasn't been affected by all this new fancy um, scheduling. Uh, the, the new way they're doing uh, scheduling of the trains? Not really, but of course he's like uh, number two or three on the seniority list. So uh, maybe he doesn't get hurt as bad as some of the ones lower on the totem pole would because yeah. he's got regular runs on two, off one, and he likes the night runs because he's got two kids. One of them is autistic, so it gives him a little bit more home time. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, he, he loves it, but uh, the, it's not a life for a married man anymore. Questions. Anyone else want to say anything? Some of you have been muted the whole time, but you're welcome to join in. We got a couple of minutes left before we uh, break away. Anything hey, else? Yeah. I just wondered if you ever considered going to outer coat paint. The powder coat, the you know, powder coat paint will not work for us due to many of our construction techniques, but also mainly because we can't two-tone with the powder coat. Many, many of our products are, are two, three, or, or four color uh, and have to be you know, hand masked off and striped. And, and the powder coat does not allow for that. It's just great if you want a single color you know, car, train car or something, but, you know, when we're doing a UP locomotive, that does not lend itself to powder coat or, or like uh, Tom Cooper's, you know, SP locomotive in the background. You can't powder coat that when you have, uh, uh, you know, things like the bloody red nose that's, that's masked off and the, and the graphics uh, Southern Pacific you know, painted on. It's not just uh, vinyl graphics in a lot of these cases. There's a lot of paint operations on these. And so it, it, it uh, while I'm very familiar with the powder coat and it's a wonderful uh, a way to do it, it does not lend itself to our product line. Any other questions, thoughts, or comments? Uh, Jim, do you have access or do we have access through Titan to uh, pick up detailed pieces for our, well, let's say, uh, a box car or mm -hmm. something like that. What has happened is I, I had a derailment, which basically ripped up my uh, uh, box car. So the ladder got destroyed and the, yeah. a lot of other things. Most, most anything that we produce for ourselves mm -hmm. can be available, okay? Yeah. Uh, and if you're talking about just other detailed parts that we don't do, uh, I do highly recommend someone like Precision uh, Steel Car. They do a great job supporting the hobby uh, in parts and uh, kits. And, uh, but as far, if it's something, replacement part uh, for something torn off one of our products, we'll do what we can to help support you. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, I appreciate that. 
Mm-hmm. Didn't appreciate the guy that hit me. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else before we uh, break away? I had a question about that first machine that you showed cutting those plates. Is, is that like laser cutting or? No, it, it's what it's called. It's called a CNC router that has been heavily modified to be a milling machine. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, okay. And uh, we we looked into things like a water jet or a plasma, uh, but the problem with those is is unless you get very sophisticated, they are 2D machines. And we are doing 3D operations on many of our parts. Also, uh, it allows us to, well, one go back one, the holes that we put in for a lot of our rivets and a lot of the things that we do are small holes. Mm-hmm. And milling them or milling them in is much quicker and more accurate than, than the water jets and other machines can be. Now, they're great at anything bigger than the holes that we do. But they're not great when you're doing a passenger car side that has 1,500 holes on it. Yeah, uh, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, that makes, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And then when you're machining uh, journal boxes and you're doing some 3D work on them uh, or, or miscellaneous parts, you know, it takes a milling machine to do that. Any other questions? Well, I think we've, we've about done it again, and we appreciate it. We've, we've chatted for almost a, a good 40 minutes, it looks like. Um, and again, glad to have you. Uh, appreciate you being a part of it. We're going to do it again. If you have any suggestions on topics that you want us to uh, uh, do or, or things you want to know, lay it on, email us, or do it through Facebook, and Corey will catch it. Corey is the main one monitoring our Facebook. I don't do much on Facebook, but I do uh, catch a lot of the emails and phone calls. So we're, we're glad to have you. Uh, anything else before bye-bye? Quick question. Yes, in sir. Your tra- in your travels, I know this year is more or less a bust for just about all of us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you plan, plan on, uh, how shall I put this tactfully, coming east? Coming east. You mean going up north? <laughs> well, you're you're you up north, yes, north yeah. northeast. In other words, in the seven and a quarter world. Oh yeah, no, I I I I, I get along fine with the seven and a quarter people. I integrate, and mingle just fine with them. I blend in when I'm there. <laughs> um, and oh, no. uh, yes, I'm I'm very uh, interested in doing that. Uh, if, if you don't mind, send me an email giving me some dates or, or, or suggestions, okay? Uh, we are all set up now to travel. Yeah, because uh, I noticed uh, up at Adirondack, uh, Plum Cove and one of the other vendors was up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they had a uh, one of theirs running around and everybody yep. was playing with it. But uh, yeah. I know seven and a quarter is a little bit of a, a, a niche type item because... We're a little unique up here in more ways than one. <laughs> well, I, you know, from our point of view and my point of view here, uh, it, it, it's not to us. In other words, everything we, all the train cars and locomotives we make are all standardized and, and we'll just either put seven and a quarter axle sets or seven and a half axle sets under it. We've made it that way. And uh, so we can easily react to anything seven and a quarter. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, we, we, it's, it's very standard to us, so it's okay. We'll blend in just fine. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. All right. Doreen, well, thank you, you in the NS territory down there, Doreen? Oh, yeah. We're in NS territory. There's a Norfolk Southern track, the pumpkin vine right behind our plant or in front of it, you could say. Yeah, uh, I remember seeing that. Every day. Yep. So. Hi. All right. You all take care. Good to see you. Good to talk with you. Everyone take care and uh, hope to see you again. Stay safe, stay uh, out of the fires, and stay out of the rain. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you and chatting with you more. Yeah, it's better down there than it is up here. Take care, Jim. All right. Take it easy.